In order for you to be able to uh, implement or, or to guide the implementation uh, in your school, you first need to uh, implement the high reliability teaching in your own practice first. And I was recommending that you might even uh, want to use the rest of this year to put in place four key aspects of, of activity in order to uh, allow that to happen so that you use this year almost as an embedding uh, time when you focus on four key aspects. And they were the aspects that we uh, spent the morning going through and we actually didn't get finished and, and I do want to uh, finish off uh, some of those uh, this morning. Um, but the, the, I was suggesting that if you can get these four uh, fronts moving uh, through uh, your work over the rest of this year, you'll be in a, um, a much better position and you'll have more knowledge uh, about how things can operate uh, uh, in uh, subsequent years. The, the four strands were, first of all, to really know the pedagogy, to know uh, really what, what it looks like. And we will uh, review uh, a, a, some of that uh, in, in a few minutes. But I was really wanting to make the distinction uh, between, first of all, uh, I guess, teaching and a content focus on what you're doing and a teaching focus that is really targeting the student's thinking. The high reliability strategies are on about students learning how to think, learning how to act on text in particular ways. So it, it's that uh, interventionist approach where I am really guiding the students' thinking. It's possible for me uh, in a grade three classroom to have various literacy groups, to put in place various literacy teaching procedures. But if I don't, as a grade three teacher, have every child putting in place the thinking actions, and if I don't take steps to make sure they're putting in place the thinking actions, the share time, the orienting, those activities won't matter very much because you will still have the children who are coming in, into your activity, into your share time, the children who are able coming in and being able. And you'll still have the children who are less able coming in and being less able. And the tragedy is they'll be going out less able as well. Is this okay? We really have to target the students' thinking and we also have to target what they believe about themselves as learners, that they see, whether it's in a primary classroom or a secondary classroom, that they see there is a real focus on them learning how to act and that we are very interested in knowing what the outcomes of their actions are. What new knowledge have they got? I'm really wanting to stress this because we can really focus on what we would call good teaching. But if the good teaching isn't targeting the student's learning, we know it's not really good teaching. So we can put in place, we can have all the teaching activities. But, he, but if we're not having the, stu if we're not targeting the students' thinking, of, you know, at that point, then, then we're not going to, um, uh, w w we're not going to get there. Uh, I think this is, is, is really important. I was, I was working in a, in a school in, uh, uh, Western Region yesterday uh, with um, some Year 7 students and uh, the, well, one of the children uh, read a text and it was about um, a, a 
the, the first sentence of the text, the first two sentences of the text, uh, there was um, a, uh, a child who'd ended up at a place called, I think it was called Out With, uh, you know, w w with his parents. And uh, the sentence went on to say, and he knew there was no prospect on the horizon of uh, Daniel and Ben joining him. Now, the child read it uh, word perfectly. And uh, after he'd read it, I said, what do you think? There was no prospect on the horizon of this happening. And the child, you know, didn't know at all. And uh, I, 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 he, he said to me, oh, you know, the, um, the, the boys and his parents have ended up at this place. And I said, OK, make a picture of what you've read. And he made a picture of the uh, two, uh, of, the, of uh, the boy being in a place uh, where he wouldn't be able to uh, have other people to, amuse him, uh, to, uh, to be amused by, and so he'd have to amuse himself. And I, I said to him, where in the picture are Ben and Daniel? And he hadn't actually, when he made the picture, he'd made a picture of the boy being on the farm at Outwith, but he hadn't made a picture of where these two other people were. These other two people happened to be in Berlin. And so I said, you know, what is, how likely is it, or do you think Daniel and Ben are going to visit him tomorrow? And he said, no, there's no way. And so it was important uh, for, the, uh, you know, for the student to learn how to build a picture that not only represented the boy and his parents, but also the other two people mentioned in the story. And so then I said, OK, now, what do you think? There's no prospect of that happening. As he said, there's no chance. And so from the picture, the child could use his meaning-making motor to work out that uh, there was no prospect on the horizon he could use his meaning-making motor to actually see that another way of saying it was no chance. But if we'd only stuck with the partial picture of the boy and his parents on the farm, that phrase would have meant nothing. So the, the issue of us really intervening in the, children's, uh, in, in the children's thinking and cueing them to use the strategies gradually uh, as effectively as possible, is going to be important. A another child in this Year 7 class, um, the, the child did, did have uh, language, as you can imagine, I guess all of these children, some, or some of them had uh, language.